All right, welcome to uh, everyone out there. I'm Tom, W5KUB. This show is about ham radio and shortwave. You're listening to and watching Amateur Radio Roundtable on our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you're out there listening, you may be listening on WBCQ shortwave on 7490 kilohertz. And uh, we, uh, we welcome you. If you're out there on shortwave listening, we, we really uh, would like to hear from you. If you will, send us an email to tom at w5kub.com. Tom at w5kub.com. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know where in the world you are and how you're hearing the station tonight. And if you're out there, again, uh, in the chat room and on our YouTube channel, if you will, please hit that subscribe button. There should be a little arrow pointing down here somewhere down toward the subscribe button. Down here, hit that subscribe button. That will help to... Uh, uh, get more people familiar with our show there. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, hey, we didn't have a show last week, so I've just about forgotten what to say here. I mean, Glenn's going to help me here in a little while. Hey, um, join our Facebook group. We got a great Facebook group. It's for shortwave listeners, it's for our ham radio operators, and it's for just electronics uh, enthusiasts. And uh, you can you can find that Facebook group just by typing in W5KUB uh, in the uh, in the search bar there. Well, I just see Tom just joined in the chat room. I don't know who Tom is. I'm Tom, and I know it's not me. So welcome, Tom. Glad to have you there uh, in the chat room. And uh, we, uh, I, I don't think he's been in here before. So welcome, Tom. All right. So. Uh, Guys, you, you, we didn't have a show last week. You, you may have uh, wondered what was going on. Uh, Kathy had a uh, hip replacement. She has had a hip that's been bothering her now for a year or so, and the pain was just getting bad, and she just said, you know, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to go ahead and get this hip replacement. So uh, they went in here and uh, did a hip replacement. And uh, if you ever look up hip replacement on the Internet, there's it goes – there's a thousand different roads that can go down, and uh, um, you know you don't really know what to expect. Even the doctor said a lot of people go home the same day that we put that new hip uh, joint in, and uh, uh, that wasn't our case. We stayed in the hospital four days, and then went home uh, in pretty bad shape, I would say. But you know it's been one week now. Uh, one week today that she's come home and she's doing great. She's walking around with a walker, kind of as an assist. Uh, but she can, uh, you know, walk around and do things. She's watching TV. She's, you know, lunch, computer. Uh, every, she can do everything. So she's doing. Uh, she's doing a lot better, and uh, we're uh, we're glad that's happening. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's the weather or what, guys. Glenn is uh, sleepy tonight, and I've, I've had a headache for three days. Maybe it's because I've been to the hospital uh, half my time here. So, well, uh, you know, hey, the, the, the group's not doing too good tonight. But we won't talk a whole lot about it. Let's see. we got Bill coming in here. Let me get Bill in, in, the, in the room here. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail about it. That's just letting you guys know kind of what, uh, what was going on with us uh, last week. Uh, so, uh, hey, Glenn, how you doing, man? And uh, you're not going to fall asleep on us, are you? No, I actually went and got coffee, and I've got to be up at 5 a.m., so this is probably not the smartest move in, in the world, but what the heck. Mm. And um, as soon as Bill gets on, I just say, you know, we just hand the whole show to him and let him finish it up. Well, we can do that. I might go take a nap, and you can go on to bed, and, and Bill can just do the show. Yeah, and, and when, yeah when, we'll let Bill handle it. Just, but no... Um, you know, it's been a busy past couple weeks for me. Uh, I went to the Corinth Ham Fest week before last, and then this past weekend we had the Memphis Free Fest. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, I've been working on a couple projects here in the house, and mm -hmm. um, in QST next month is going to be my review of the Dr. Duino Inventor, which uh, we had uh, Guido Benelli here just a couple weeks ago from Dr. Duino. And uh, that's coming out in the May QST. And then in a subsequent QST, I can't say what it is, but it is a special project at the request of Dave Minster, the CEO of AWRL. And that 
uh, is arrived in his hands today. So they're going to be doing all that fun stuff with what I sent them. It's an Arduino project, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what that is. I, I'm sure it's going to be something really neat, man. I, I think it is. It's yeah. it's really crazy and wild, and uh, it's it's not something you'd normally expect to see. Yeah, well, that's that's great. Okay, very yeah. good. Uh, hey, we're gonna uh, talk a little more about uh, FreeFest after a while. I've got some video. I walk around to FreeFest, so you know we didn't have time to plan a lot tonight. But hey, we've got some some neat things to talk about here tonight, and uh, we're gonna let you experience FreeFest. Just like we did the walk around in free fest is probably about a about a 12 or 13 minute video and uh, you know just get to shop the tables with us uh okay let's see we had bill join us hey bill how you doing come on in here bill where are you bill bill oh uh, there we go there, you there we go yeah <laughs> uh, trying a different helps. computer trying a different computer and uh yeah. Zoom buttons are in different places, and a new update on Zoom every time they change it, it messes me up. <laughs> well, How's the uh, audio and video tonight? Well, it looks pretty good. It, looks, it said your good. bandwidth was low a minute ago. Yeah, I'll see. You oh, yeah. Out in the middle of the boonies here. But it looks it looks okay. All right. Well, hey, we're glad you joined us tonight. We're good. We're glad you joined us tonight, and uh, we'll. Uh, I want to talk a little about... Uh, uh, we got the Great Plains coming up. We mentioned that. And then also, I want to talk yes. about, about W5KB112. I think it's still flying. We haven't heard from it for about uh, four or five days, but I think it's still flying, to tell you the truth. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into that it later. It probably is. We'll get into that later there. Um, so uh, let's see. What was I going to Oh, hey, uh, hey, Glenn. Uh, 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 Glenn stayed till the final drawing uh, at FreeFest this week. Uh, I, I got tired of walking around the four or five hours, so I just came on home. You didn't have to be home for the big prizes. So, hey, I did win an MFJ uh, uh, clock uh, while I was there. You know, it's a little clock here, you know, about a $4 clock, I guess. I, uh, I won that while I was there. But after I left, uh, and I didn't have to be there, after I left, I won a uh, another mobile rig. I won a uh, FT2980 uh, mobile rig. So, you know, hey. Okay, so that, that turned out pretty good. Yeah, nice little radio. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm you know, I, it's kind of sad. You know, I buy tickets and I sit there and I don't win. Tom comes in, he goes home, and they draw his name after he's left. Well, I just couldn't stay much longer. Wins. I mean, I was getting I was getting really tired of staying here. I mean, yeah, I, it was. You know, I figured, you know, I, I was hoping to win the generator or the 40-inch TV. I, I would love the generator. Yeah, the yeah. generator or the 40-inch TV, but no, I had to win a mobile rig, you know, so I don't know. I did win the drone there a couple of years yeah, ago, though, yeah. so, you know, yeah, I do win every now and then, but oh, nothing like you and Joe uh, you Eisenberg. Know, I, I think last year I won one of those bio whatever batteries, you know, one of those. That's right, yeah, you won one of the nice batteries. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with that mobile rig. Maybe I'll... You know, maybe, I, hey, I can put four or five mobile rigs in the truck and just have them on different frequencies, I guess, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because I sure don't know how to change the frequencies and, and, and tones and stuff while I'm driving. So I have to yeah. set one. It stays like that for about a year or two years. So I'll just set one up on different frequencies and, you know, label it. And uh, that's how, uh, you know. Uh, that's how, what I did with go. the one in my car is I programmed yeah. in every repeater that I generally am around or like to and from Dayton kind of thing. So yeah. I just, you know, rotate on up the dial and it's all programmed in. Well, you know, I didn't need, I was hoping to win the generator or maybe, I don't know what I do with the 40 inch TV. I've got them hanging all over the wall, but yeah, you know, I don't need the generator now that I've got this big home generator installed, but still it'd be neat to win it, you know? Yeah. You know, there you go. I, you know, it, it'd be kind of cool. Hey, it's I did the buy something. Victory. I did buy something there. I'm going to show you what I bought. Um, man, I splurged. I actually bought stuff too, and yeah. I promised myself I wouldn't. I splurged. I splurged on this one, and I, I spent 25 bucks there. And um, I saw this. And, you know, it reminded me of the 1960s uh, when I was uh, uh, a novice and a general. And uh, we would get the uh, we'd get these parts, these uh, military parts, uh, uh, Mars surplus, and stuff like that, and 
it reminded me of that and i said you know this is kind of neat i'm gonna i'm gonna get this i'm gonna show you what i've got here let me get the other camera and uh let me see if i can't uh show you here uh okay so guys look i bought i bought this box right here this is kind of a cool box and what it's got it's got a uh frequency meter in it see the frequency meter right there and it's got a voltmeter. Now, I don't need this, really. I mean, this is good if you have a generator or something, uh, you know, at, at home, you know, particularly a, um, you know, a portable generator where you want to check your frequency and stuff. Now, this is old school. Yeah, this I is, love those reads. Yeah, this is old school. In fact, if you look slick. at this, this read, the, the, if, if you've never seen one of these before, let me tell you what it is. These are little reeds right here, and they will vibrate at the frequency. So if you're on 60 cycles, this, this reed right here should vibrate, and you'll see it, you know, much taller uh, than, than the others. And uh, uh, I did check my power earlier. I do have cycles here. I do not have hertz. But this thing does verify that I've got some cycles, that I'm using cycles here. And then, of course, I've got a, a you know, this is kind of neat. Uh, the voltmeter here, zero to, you know, 150 volts. Hey, and you know what I did? Let me tell you something. I'm going to plug this in. Let me plug it in right now. And you'll see yeah, well, you know, if you're getting cycles, you're using electricity that was made in 1943. Now, look at this. Look, 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 look. You can start to see it vibrate in your watch. Yeah. Hey, you're you're right on it. 60 I'm on cycles. I'm 60 cycles. Look at that. And I want to tell you something. So I'm back here in the studio, and I plug this thing in. I'm reading, I'm reading, um, let's see if I can get it. I'm reading 110 volts. Well, it's a little low. Well, well, and, and that started concerning me. Now, I unplugged it and I went over to my workbench and I plugged in the power strip. I got 120 volts. I got 100, well, but I got 122 volts everywhere in the house, throughout the house. Here on, on my studio, I'm seeing 110. And you know why huh. I'm seeing that? You know why? Why? I have a large UPS outside wow. that's running all my computers and TV and go. my network. Yeah. And the UPS, it took me a minute to figure this out. The UPS is putting out 110 volts. Anywhere else in the shack here, anywhere else in the shack here is 120 volts. So that's kind of uh, kind of neat here, but... Look at here. Look at here. I, I got 60 cycles here, guys. 60 cycles. These aren't hertz. These are cycles. All right. Well, I just showed yeah, you. I, I love those read frequencies. Yeah, I just showed you though. that, uh, you know, we still use cycles. Some people, some people still use cycles here. All right. So I thought that was kind of neat. I, I bought this box and I didn't need it. I probably will never use it. Uh, like I said, with my generator, I don't think I will ever need it, but it's kind of neat. Maybe for field day, you know, hey, when you guys get down parks on the, or what's that, park, radio day in the park, you know, you're running generators. Uh, yeah, day in the park. I can bring now, this down here and we can I'm not going to be outdone by Tom here. What do you got there? Wait a minute. I, I got me something too. Let's look at it. What do you got there? Hold it up. Wait, don't open it. Don't open it yet. Hold don't, it up. Don't open it. Hold it little, up. Let's see, little, the, let's old, see the sides. Old, old box. Yeah, let's see the sides. With the latch ah, and ah, everything. I, there's a clue. I see a clue. I see a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a little peek inside. And then Just we open it inside, and it has an operating manual. Woo. And it is. Look at that. A tube, tube tester. tester. All right. Tube tester. There we well, go. That is, center that is here. So there cool, you go. Man. A little tube tester. And believe it or not, it will test the uh, com Compactron final that's used in the HW16. And that's the one tube that I don't have a tester for or did not have a tester for. And this will test those. So now I can test the final in the HW16 that I'm going to be refurbishing. All right. Well, you know, I I so, I, I told that's you what guys, I, got I told you guys a story years ago when I moved. I I threw away probably over 1,000 tubes on the street for the garbage man yeah. to pick up. They were in boxes too. They weren't just 
Didn't we all do that, yeah. man? And I finally, I finally just got rid of my uh, tube chester. I had, uh, I had a nice uh, B and K tube chester, and just you know got rid of it. I think I sold it up to Dayton one year. So uh, hey, in a chat room, sold there, mine to uh, Fair Radio Sales. I sold mine to Fair Radio Sales for about fifty cents a piece, and I'm sure they've made yeah. a good profit on them. Oh gosh, yeah. some of them were from the '30s, in the box, brand new. Yeah, yeah. And it's getting hard to find some of those that still work and stuff. Well, I see, I see, I see. Let's see, uh, David, 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 uh, KG four C and Y. He says. The generators that they used in the first com had those meters. He said first com. I wonder if that's the first mob. David, is that the first mob you're talking about? First mobile com group or maybe not. I was in the fourth mob and uh, yeah, all of our generators had those meters on the front. They were kinda kinda neat to watch that thing vibrate there. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. So but yeah, yeah, this was an old school weekend. You know, I bought all kinds of stuff at this one. Actually, they had a parts vendor there that had really good prices on components. So I stocked up. I mean, they had a little yeah. bit of everything there. And I actually bought more this time than I have in a while. Um, uh, David said, yes, it was the first mob. Hey, I just happened to have a picture of me in a fourth mob. Look at this. This is my early days, guys. My early days. There you go. Fourth mob. man. You might read on the box here. It says fourth mob somewhere. Uh, I've got a I've got a hot plate there that they they, they don't want you to have a hot plate because when I plug a hot plate in even you know those are some big generators but man when I turn that hot plate on that generator would go uh, and the lights yeah. would go out and I turn the generator off and next thing I know somebody would be opening their tent door and saying anybody here got a hot plate and everybody said no uh -huh. we don't have one we no we don't have one so anyway uh, so I, I quit taking the hot plate you know I mean yeah. I, you know, we used to carry our own food. We, you know, we had sea rations, but who wants to eat sea rations when you can really have, you know, take some good food with you, you know? Oh, man. That was the good old days back here, man. Oh, let's see. So your tube tester is an old tube tester. It's only going to test old tubes, I guess. Yeah. 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 But uh, that's the key is, you know, the HW-16 is an old radio. I mean, yeah, it's 60s yeah. era. Yeah, yeah. And I got the capacitor kit for it. And my plan is to recap it, test it, and then uh, put it on the air. But then it's going to get an Arduino for its VFO to eliminate the chirp and everything. And so it's going to be modernized for a CW rig. Yeah, yeah. And it may even do JT65. Now, how many minds is that going to blow, having an HW16 that does JT65? I don't know, man. Is it going to drift a little, maybe? Well, probably a little bit. Yeah, probably a little no, bit. No, not on JT65. It won't drift an, an inch. Yeah. I'm looking at the chat room there. Let's see. Let's see what's going on in the chat Because it's going to be running the um, the DDS module. Yeah. War, war me. Oh, no. R-A-R-M-Y. Our army. Oh, our grew army. up on sea rations. All right, he grew up on sea rations. We ate a lot of sea rations, and uh, yeah, we a lot of sea rations. Did, did you guys get any any uh, CS riot gas? They used the CS riot gas on us. Uh, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Let's see. Uh, let's see. First rig was the HW sixteen. Yeah, that was mine too. Yeah. Hey. All right. Well, hey, I got a video, a walk around video of the Memphis. Free fest and uh, I'm gonna play that, guys. If, if if it's boring, go get you a cup of coffee or a Coca Cola or a, a sandwich or something, and come back in about ten minutes. But uh, who knows? Glenn and I are gonna talk about what we're seeing there, and Bill Bill can too. He can chime in. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough of, of Memphis Free Fest and let you kind of see what it was since you weren't there, and uh, and then we'll be back here with you in just a minute. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. I think I have to click there. There we go. And there maybe. Okay, here we go. All right, we're at Memphis Free Fest. All and, right. Uh, man, there's a lot of cars outside. I've never seen so many cars uh, there. Uh, we're up by the uh, uh, food court. We've got tables out here, and then there's the uh, inside food market. Uh, there is a uh, tailgate area outside going on. 
we'll do a quick walk. Yeah, it was quite here. crowded in there. It was, yeah. There's some uh, six meter loops. Yeah. You know, this uh, ham fest only lasts from uh, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m., Saturday only. Yeah, which to me, for, for them, is the, the right amount of time. And they have some really good door prizes. Uh -huh. Everything there, uh, all proceeds benefit the Labonner Children's Hospital. You know, so it's really a great yeah, cause. Yeah. All, all and, proceeds uh, go to Labonner Children's Hospital. Yeah. Let's see, a lot we, of pick good out, let's see if we can pick out anything here we can recognize, you know? Oh, this guy here had some really cool LED and laser Look at that. toys and stuff. That is Look at a that spotlight, flashlight. Man. I should have got that spotlight. That would have been cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, you could use that in World War II to spot bombers in the sky. Yeah, yeah, you could have. You know, but there was just some really good stuff there. There's a lot a of tower, tower parts tower play this year. Tower stands. I had one of those tower stands right there. You clip it on the side of the tower, and you can actually yeah. stand on it with both feet. And look at the LED signs this guy's got. I, I want mean, that, those I want really that big cool. sign back there. Oh, I was wondering where I was at there. I was over at the other table looking at stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were some pretty good deals there, although there were some really high cost items there, too. Yeah, there were, but um, by and large, you know, the component prices there from the component vendor was just fabulous. A dollar for 100 resistors. Yeah, here's some... Uh, Here's some old radios here. Yeah, they had the Collins stuff and the Hammerlin stuff. They had a. Uh, I had, hey, I had one of these at, at S. What is it? S. Thirty eight or something. That was an S. Fifty eight, I believe, or something. I, uh, That's not a thirty. I had one of those. I don't know what happened to it, man. And then at the front of that table, they had the two of the Drake uh, TR twos, or T two and R two. Uh huh. So they had some really cool looking stuff. And they had a, a Dentron amp there at a pretty good price. Hey, they had a uh, Alpha 86 amp here, just like the one I bought there a couple years ago. Yeah, I wanted $3,000 for it. That's a little bit much for me. I think, I think, I paid, I think, 600 for it. I'll see you in a little while. Yeah, there's that amp. Uh, there's a whole uh, Drake station. Here's the, there's the Drake station. Yeah. And that's a good price for that Drake. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, that was the stuff you wanted to have. Yeah. Yeah. I had one of those receivers right here. Yeah, I mean, they, they some good looking stuff from those folks uh -huh. there. Yeah. So, I'll see some tube testers. Yeah, they were over there at Corinth as well. Yeah, there's some tube testers, but uh, those were a little on the pricey side. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a people were buying a lot of stuff. Just about everybody sold a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Brett was asking about an amp. Yes, somebody had uh, an Ameritron. Look at there. Um, Look at there. Hey, he found old Glenn there. Hey, Danny. Hey, Danny. You buying stuff? What do you get there? Tube checker. Yeah. Oh, little tube checker, man. Yeah, just need some tubes now. I have them. Do you? Hey.
Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff. Just uh, I'm I'm trying to think on the Ameritron. Uh, Tom, you remember that Ameritron? Probably coming up here on the left, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, I think there was a 600 watt solid state there. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, 600 solid state. Auto switching and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Had some nice hardline connectors there. And I think that's what I like this year is a really good diversity in the equipment there. There's a Memphis group, group right there. Oh, the train's going by. Yeah, that was the other thing. This uh, well, you little center, the Bartlett here. Municipal oh, Station Center, whatever, was right next where? to the railroad track, so you had trains going by all day. Yep. There's a VFO for the Atlas right. 210 or yeah. two, uh, Atlas yeah. radios. Somebody else there had an uh, Atlas 210 mm -hmm. uh, and the power supply, you know, base for it. He I tried had to give away that monitor. Nobody would take it. it. He tried to give it away. but Well, you know, hardly anybody's running that stuff anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That was a Yaesu 3000. Nice looking radio. Mm -hmm. You know, but they had stuff on every table in there. That place was full and spectate, not spectators, but, you know, uh, visitor, audience, whatever you want to call it. They were, that place was jam packed when it opened. I mean, and it was packed much of the day. Kid foam patch right there, I think. I think yeah, you there. still see those, but like, who uses those anymore? Yeah, I got a there was a day when we would have killed for those things. Yeah, I got a couple of those on the eBay to sell. I think it's foam patch. You know, but by and large, you, know, you can see the component vendor there on the right, and their prices were really, really good. Man, I tell you, he sure uh, has. Little containers for everything. Yeah, if you needed capacitors, there they were. A lot of set that up, man. Mm. Yeah, a lot of stuff that they had. They had zeners, diodes, um, MOSFETs, resistors, caps. Quite a bit. Here's the here's the Alpha 86 coming up. This is this is uh, it's coming up next. Uh, Right, no, that's not it. Right, coming up next. That's a that's a really nice amp. That's uh, I, yeah. I bought that. I bought that a couple years ago. There, I paid six hundred dollars for it. That thing you can you can lay a brick on the key and walk away and come back a month later. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I thought that price was a little bit yeah, high. Yeah, I think that's a little high, man. I really do. Maybe new, that would be a good price new. Well, it'll come down when he gets tired of hauling that in and out of these places. Hey, it is heavy, man. It is really heavy. Yes. But as you can see, they just had a really good selection of stuff to buy. Yeah, they had the Mirage mobile amplifiers for two meters. Yeah. The uh, the 3016, which is a 160 watt two meter amp, and uh, like I say, it was just a well attended event this year. I heard at eight o'clock in the morning, before they even opened the doors, they had already raised four thousand dollars for the Bonner, and that was before Tom got there. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so that means they probably raised six, seven thousand dollars. Yeah, for the Bonner. I have no idea what that is. DTMF that is a controller. DTMF controller for yeah. touchtone. Touchtone decoder and controller. Yep. And of course, TN07 was there with their antennas. Also, we had this is uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, uh, Memphis, Tennessee. 
Yeah, I think we had uh, who I can't remember. Is it JR or whatever is the um, MFJ vendor that was there? Severe thunderstorms today. Yeah. We got some tailgating yeah. going on outside. Let's see what we got out here. The outside was gorgeous this year. The weather couldn't have been better. Yeah, it was. Beautiful. And this was in Memphis, Tennessee, Ken. Over in Bartlett. Hey, old man. How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. We're going to get you on the show Tuesday night here. Yeah. Well, you got some fine stuff out here. This is the kind of stuff I like. Man. Well, maybe you can sell all that. It's supposed to get some storms today. How right. you doing? Good to see you. Uh, balloon. Yeah. yeah, we got one uh, today. It's been up 300 days. And another one's been up 182. I remember when you started that, yeah. y'all had a little Oh, uh, well, hey, out. a couple of years ago, it, yeah. was, it was tough to go around the world. We've been around the world about 20 times now. 300 days. Yeah, the amazing part is that's almost a whole year in the air. Yeah. A couple bencher keyers right there. They were really nice. There's your shortwave radio. Yeah, they had several really nice ones there. Mm -hmm. I might just do that. Does it? Yeah, okay. I'll come back with you. I'll come back just a second. One second. By the end of the day, a lot of that stuff was already gone, though. It was, yeah. like I say, I, this was one of those ham fests where everybody's buying something, and just about everybody walked out of there with something in their hands. It was really a nice, nice ham fest. And basically, I sold out of everything on my table. I was left with very little. And uh, if I'd have sold the alien, I'd have been completely sold out. All right, well. You just didn't quite come down to the right price on the alien. I got I got Glenn down to zero dollars on the alien, but mm -hmm. I wanted something better, and he wasn't going to carry yeah. it out. For no, me. I was not going to pay you ten dollars to take my stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. That's that's where you were heading. I'm like, no. I offered to put it out in your car and everything, but no, no, yeah. no. You wanted me to pay you, and that would have been my my lunch money that I had to give you. Well, anyway, guys, that was free fest in Memphis. Uh, I think. Um, Three or four different clubs come together uh, to uh, put that on. All the uh, proceeds go to uh, Le Bonner Children's Hospital. Uh, it's completely free. They give you a ticket when you go in. You don't have to buy a ticket. You get a free ticket. And Glenn, what about the tables? Are the tables free? Tables are free as well, yeah. The tables are free, free tickets. The only thing that costs is if you want to buy extra raffle tickets. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, of course, uh, your lunch, you know, the hamburgers, yeah. hot dogs, and drinks and stuff well, that they I, had. And I, and I tell you a secret, man, if you, you know, they announced it. If you just waited a little bit at past noontime, the hot dogs came down to a buck a piece, man. buck a piece, yeah. You know, uh, and that, that was a pretty good hot dog I had. I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good hot dog. I had the too. hamburger, and it was pretty good, you know, especially when you're starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was good. See All Bill's right. over there stuffing his face with something. Bill's eating? Okay. So let me do this. Let's, oh, he's uh, got chips, cheese puffs. Yeah, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back, guys, uh, with you guys. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Cabin fever? Spring into the new year with ICOM. ICOM's newest amateur FM transceiver is the IC V3500, and it's ready to hit the road with whatever you're doing. With a compact body and simple interface, this radio is a must for those looking for a long-range mobile with a fresh look, the ICT-10 is a rugged portable that meets or exceeds standard military testing. 
With an IP67 waterproof rating, the ICT-10 can withstand any fuel activities ahead. Hear any transmission and listen to FM broadcast with the loud 1.5 watt speaker. The IC705 is a perfect sidekick and QRP companion. Base station features and functionality at the tip of your fingers. It's a portable package. It covers HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at just over 2 pounds with an RF direct sampling. Most of the HF bands and IF sampling. The ID5100A is innovation and mobility taken to the next level. Designed from user input, the ID5100 offers an intuitive user interface experience with an industry-leading touchscreen display. Additionally, the ID5100 connects with Android devices and Bluetooth headsets via the optional Bluetooth module. The ID5100A is one of the most advanced dual-band mobiles on the market today. And last but not least is the ID52A. It's a VHF-UHF dual-bander with D-Star and FM dual-mode functions and is the first handheld amateur radio with a full-color 2.3-inch waterfall display. This radio supports conventional FM communications and D-Star simplex repeater regional and worldwide calls over the D-Star Internet Gateway. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM Radio. Here we go. All right, and we are back. Uh, all right, well, hey, uh, hey, a couple announcements real quick here. Let me see. we got some ham things coming up here. Let me tell everybody what we got going here. Uh, this is... Glenn, Glenn, you can talk about this, man. This is the day in the park, man, down in, uh, where is this, Olive Branch or somewhere? Yeah. This is going to be at the uh, Olive Branch uh, City Park on October 14th. We did this several years ago, and what it is is the Mississippi uh, clubs all get together, and once a year, uh, Malcolm Keon, the, the section manager, um, selects a club or clubs to put on this day in the park and it's just kind of kind of a ham get together in a park and um, we made it we did it about three years ago and we gave away about four thousand dollars worth of prizes had a whole bunch of people come up and cook barbecue and had a little flea market and of course you know had operation going on and just had all sorts of fun and uh, they're going to be doing it again on October 14th with the Chickasaw Amateur Radio Association and the Olive Branch Clubs uh, getting together and, and doing it this year. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, so if you're in the Mississippi area, you know, come on over and spend a day with us. We'll feed you, give you a chance to win some good stuff. So, um, I went, la I think I went to the one last year. It was, it was pretty neat now. Day in a park. This is different than oh that that was winter field day. I went and y'all were getting yeah. No, this out. is yeah, not no. field day. This is just yeah. a a day in the park right. with ham radio, flea market, and operating and food. All right, and we got another one coming up here, and uh, uh, this is uh, the first annual Swap Fest on Crowley's Ridge, Saturday, April twenty second, on Crowley's Ridge State Park up at Walcott. It's a one-day deal, kind of like the Memphis Free Fest, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on April 22nd. Free admission. They got tailgating out there if you want to tailgate. I was thinking about going to this. Crowley's Ridge extends quite a long distance. In fact, it comes on down to within about 30 miles of Memphis here. And I was thinking Crowley's Ridge, I may go over here to this, but this is uh, much further north. Uh, this is almost up at the Arkansas and Missouri border so if you're in uh southern uh, uh missouri you might want to consider coming down for uh swap fest and if you're in uh, uh you know northern arkansas uh, drive on up to curly's ridge uh to the uh, swap fest so i think uh i think it'll be good this is their first one so save the day it is a pretty I, drive yeah. up there though yeah, i have October to say 21st. that i enjoy that drive it's truman arkansas so that's uh that's pretty good, dear. I, I, you know. Oh, is this Truman? Well, well, you know what? It says save the day. It says Walcott. Well, I know it, but if you look at the little the little black insert oh. there, save the no, date. No, that's save the date. That's for October 21st. Oh, wait a minute. 
for the October Swap Fest. That's the Truman one that we did. Oh, yeah. So there's two of them here. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. I I, I think last year we made it up to the Truman one. That's October the 21st. Yes. Uh, And this this one, Crowley's Ridge, is um, April 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. So the Curly's Ridge is probably a couple hour drive, maybe two and a half hour drive for me. The Truman, Arkansas is maybe about an hour drive for me right there. All right. Yeah. Well, very good. All right. Well, well, now while we're talking Ham Fest, yeah. we are literally a month away from Dayton. And yeah. Bill and I both have some interesting news about Dayton. Oh, boy. Uh, I will be doing. Uh, my first forum ever at Dayton. I'll be doing my Arduino, the next generation forum on Saturday at 915. And I think, Bill, you're going to be doing one of your balloon forums, aren't you? Yeah, the balloon forums uh, are going to be on Friday around 11, I think it's 1115 or so, and forum room three. And uh, we're going to have uh, Ken, K9YO, from the infamous balloon that may possibly have been shot down, but certainly looks like it did. <laughs> anyways, anyways, he's going to be discussing how to make your own whisker um, uh, balloon transmitter out of uh, um, an Arduino Mini and uh, and uh, the some different modules, a GPS module and a transmitter module. Oh, and he's going to show how to do that. It, have an, it ought to be an interesting uh, talk. But he's from the North Illinois Bottle Cap Balloon Brigade. So yep. uh, that Is was all over the news. That the he's got live video of the incoming missile to that balloon? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, that would be quite a footage if he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then the other thing we've got going, so that's, uh, and we're going to do uh, two Pico balloon launches, one uh, APRS and one 10 meter whisper. Um, I launched a 10 meter whisper uh, balloon uh, eight days ago for my pasture behind the house. And it made it to Midway Island and then headed down directly to the tropics and hit a storm and got knocked out of the sky. Oh, bummer. But every day for the past eight days, I've had tremendous around the world coverage on 10 meters. 10 meters has been open phenomenally. It, in fact, it does better, particularly in that area we call the stands, mm-hmm. Kazakhstan and Pakistan, where it's really poor coverage. I had great coverage because mm-hmm. I was being heard in Europe and Australia and Japan and Korea. And it's uh, 10 meters has been phenomenal. Uh, the other thing we got going is the Great Plains Super Launch, uh, uh, which is in June 16th and 17th here in Huntsville, Alabama this year. It normally is in one of the Great Plains states, Kansas or Colorado or Iowa uh, or Nebraska. But this year we're bringing it to Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, Friday, June 16th will be the uh, forum where we're going to have all kinds of talks about ham radio payloads that can be flown on balloons and uh, then we're going to uh, have a super launch event saturday morning where we're going to launch uh, upwards of 10 uh, latex weather balloons and several pico balloons and for those of you who'd like to come out and launch a pico balloon payload the lifting gas is free so tom come on over on june put that on your yeah. calendar yeah might and we're going to have a tour of the Air Weather Institute and uh, the Space and Rocket Museum. Oh, that should be fun. Part of that. Uh, this website to register for it is superlaunch.org, and the registration link is now open. All right. Very well, cool. we may see you there. I don't know. And oh, by the way, Bill, I need, I need some information. What's that? On, I need some information on a balloon. Give me, give me all the specs. You know the. You know, I sent you an email. I need them to put on our map that we're testing, but I need I need the date date of launch. Uh, I need you know the telemetry one and three. I need the time. Oh slot. yeah, yeah. I need, okay. all that, I need all that information. That information has to be put yeah. in into the map. Okay. 
So send me, right. send me one or two that are flying. I, I guess it needs to be the same protocol as what you or I've been flying, right? I mean, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I still have uh, one flying that's from the Antarctica series. Uh, oh, wow. One of those is still flying. Is it on APRS uh, w, or is it? Is WB4ELK-7. Yeah. And uh, But the, the GPS is not working. Oh. So yeah. it's just enough to get a time uh, lock and occasionally a, a 2D position report. Uh, and it looks to be about 65 south. Um, anyways, it's, I don't think the current position showing on the map is, is accurate. I've been estimating its position based on the start and stop times yeah. of the telemetry, but every day, and it's on 10 meters. Well, Every day I'm okay. getting reports from uh, well, send near me, the South send Pole, me a couple. I need near a Antarctica, I, I, send, all send, over the world. Send me a couple if you know someone else. And I, I, I need yes. to put a couple in here for testing. So our one W5KB113, you know, it went down to the Southern Hemisphere. It's been flying great down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, Bill, I looked at its position uh, on uh, DaytonTime.org or whatever, where it shows the sun elevation. And man, down in here, just down here at the tip of all, uh, tip of uh, Argentina now, the sun never gets higher than 20 degrees, so it's starting to get pretty low down there. And we're still getting good tracking from down here. Uh, but you know what? The 113 was the one with the 45 degree solar panel, so I guess it knew what it was doing when it went south. So it's it's still doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, just to talk. It's, uh, that's yeah. great, and uh, it's very rare to make that transition from uh, the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. But since you were flying so high, uh, that there's more opportunity for that when you get up uh, towards the stratosphere. Well, here's the here's the new map we're working on. This is a Google map that will will track your balloons. Uh, and I know that the the uh, Sunday Hub. Uh, I saw now that you, they can you can go back to one year on those. Uh, you can go back to one year. You can go back to time of launch on this map, uh, guys. If you look at it, the 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 red there is is one twelve. Now one twelve. My problem with one twelve is it, it it had a software bug since day one. And there were many days that we might only get one or two transmissions per day. Uh, some days we might not get any. Uh, so, but it's been doing really good. Uh, and it, as Bill mentioned, I think this week it crossed the stands probably. Uh, and that is just really hard to pick them up there. I think maybe we lost part of an antenna. And because of that, it's going to be very weak. Uh, what few transmissions get out. So, I think there will be occasionally people like in the U.S. and stuff that will pick them up when they go over. So uh, I think tracking is going to be a little limited. If you look at the green line here, you can see the green line started up in the uh, northern hemisphere. It went around the earth about four times, and then it took a dive, and it went down to the southern hemisphere. And it's uh, almost down in Antarctica there uh, on a couple of the, uh, the routes there. So that's a surprising one there. And... Uh, uh, that one, that one's running a hundred milliwatt transmitter, and also it has forty-five degree uh, solar panels for low angle sun elevation. And the sun elevation down here is twenty degrees or less uh, right now. It never gets higher than about twenty degrees. So we're starting to get into winter down there. So I don't know if it's going to keep transmitting. Maybe, maybe it will. We'll see. But I'm. I'm 112, I haven't heard from it for about four or five days now. I'm hoping. I think it should be over the Pacific somewhere right now. That's not a great place with a weak signal to, to uh, get reports from, but I'm hoping that uh, it will pick up, uh, somebody will pick it up as it gets closer to the U.S. So uh, that's where we are there. And, uh, hey, hey, we still have, you know, we still have the Huey, Dewey, and Louie T-shirts. You know, if you guys want the Huey, Dewey, and Louie T-shirts right there. They're uh, they're one hundred ninety nine dollars each. Yeah, uh, Glenn, did you say you wanted two of them? Um, yeah, I'll trade you an alien for one. Oh, okay. We might can work something out there. Might work something. <laughs> out. All right. So you know, hey, that's the update. That's the update on one twelve here. You know, uh, one of the things I got to do 
in, um, you know, your home life comes before everything else. And, of course, with uh, Kathy's surgery here last week and me uh, having a headache, uh, you know, I, I think it's sinus or something. Glenn, you're not doing too good either. Man, you, you, well, mine is the case of I have to get up at 5 a.m. Oh, well, to go that's to pretty, work. Yeah, well, that makes days. me sick right here. Anyway, so I need to get up and swap out my satellite antennas. I, uh, you know, as as we discussed, I, I've got a new different satellite system. Instead of sat, PC Sat, uh, let me see who's in the chat room. I want to see if my friend uh, Rick's in there. WN4. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see Rick in here anyway. Anyway, um, so I'm using this. This is this is that SAT SAT. It's the satellite uh, tracking system. This does everything that your satellite program would do. It doesn't have to connect to a computer at all. In fact, it does not connect to a computer. It's got its own little server in it, and you just uh, from your phone or or another uh, laptop, you can just connect right to it. You can see all the satellites. You can make satellite contacts through this thing. It will also control my uh, my my azimuth and elevation on my antenna. And um, let's see, I don't know if I have. Let's see what I got here. I was looking for, you know, I got the I got the uh, Yezu azimuth elevation rotor. So this sat this sat box right here, it will actually track the satellites. The rotors plug directly into it. It will track the satellites, and uh, I, that way I don't have to keep hitting the up down button or go go left go right button and so forth. So um, there's basically my, my satellite station I've got set up right there. You can see the, the the PC on the left is tuned into a little sat box that's right above it. The little the little box with the green screen is the sat box, and it just connects to it and. Um, and then I've got the IC9700 there for um, uh, for the radio that I communicate with. So right now out there, I just have a single 10-element, uh, 2-meter Yagi uh, out there uh, for my satellite. And I've got about a 14-element Yagi for 440. And these are, you know, vertically polarized. I, I can't change the polarization. They're just single uh, polarity. So uh, my friend Rick uh, 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 talked me into taking some uh, uh, satellite antennas from him. And these are the uh, uh, M-square satellite antennas right here. And you can see they're the cross antennas. And you can see the, some of the matching right there. And there's a little relay on there. And you can actually send a voltage up to this relay. And you can, you can change the, the polarization, I guess, from uh, right-hand circular to left-hand circular and so forth if you need to. Uh, but but the the horizontal and vertical are all phased together. You can see uh, some of the phasing right there. Uh, uh, let's see. This is the uh, this is part of the 440 right here. You can see the elements are a lot shorter. And here's the box again with the relay on it there. Uh, quite long. The um, the uh, 440 antenna. My 440 antenna. My 13 element 440 antenna. Is probably about four foot long up there. Uh, th this 440 antenna is probably about 15 feet long. I mean, it is it, it is a long uh, long antenna. So I've got to put it together there, uh, and uh, I've, I've been putting it together the last uh, few days. Uh, let's see. There's uh, uh, again the two meter. Each of those elements slide through that boom, and you got a little plastic uh, insulator that. Uh, fits in a hole on the boom, and then you've got a little locking uh, clip that you slide down on the element to hold it in place. So it's kind of kind of neat the way the, it goes there. And uh, there's another shot of the part of the two meter. That's just uh, that, that's less than half the two meter. I've got two other pieces. That's a big antenna. I've got two other pieces that extend that extend this thing out right here. Uh, no wonder I, Rick wanted you to take it. Yeah, yeah. He needed garage space. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, it, 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 they're quite long, and I've got to make sure I've got turning radius up here. Also, also, Glenn, uh, man, there there was a couple pieces of nice coax at at Free Fest I should have bought. I'm, I'm probably going to have to extend my coax that goes up here. I'm probably going to have to extend each one of them by about 10 feet, 15 feet. Yeah. 
because these antennas are so long, and, and I don't think I have any more slack up there. So that's going to be another thing. And I also have to make sure that when this thing turns, it doesn't hit the roof and it doesn't hit the tree tree limbs up there. So right. I've got to get up there and measure and see how that uh, that how that goes. Uh, yeah. Now back on that sat box, so does also, uh -huh. does it also do your rig uh, Doppler shift? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. See the little cable, the little uh, zigzag cable there. Uh, it plugs. Oh, in, the, it plugs into. Okay. It plugs into the CIV uh, plug on the back of your radio. Very and it cool. Controls, okay. It controls your radio, the Doppler shift. Uh, it, you know, as the satellite moving. It changes and, and, the and Tom. Yeah. I actually, after you showed this on a previous show, I actually had to buy one of these too. Oh, so no. add that to the list of things oh, I bought that you've shown in the show. All right, all right, man. We're we're batting about ninety percent here. Uh, it seems like yeah. Before something. you do this stuff, Bill, you need to let us know so that we can do some insider trading and and you know get That's our right, shares man. in before you buy. There you go. Well, Bill, there you go. Hey, Bill, I, I see you're tracking A over yeah. seven. Um, that. Uh, an amazing satellite that's been up since the 70s yeah yeah well you know i it, it, is it al7 that the battery shorted out and it was just it, it was it shorted out and then it unshorted yeah. and now it's uh, strictly on solar power and uh, i used to work through that satellite when i was in high school yeah yeah so yeah. It, it, it went dead it the was one of my favorite went, satellites this, i think the yes satellite it was the satellite went dead for like 15 years or something up here, and then it came back to life when the batteries uh, opened up. Yeah, the so, batteries opened up, yeah, and yeah. it's got no batteries, but they're no longer shorting the power. Yeah, yeah. So the solar cells are able to, to operate it. So you can take this box. If you want to go out field day or something, you don't need the Internet. You just need to download your uh, TLE files, make sure they're up to date, and uh, you, you don't. You don't need an internet connection to see all the satellites and in the paths and track them. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a cool box. I'm looking forward to getting these new antennas up. I think they're going to make a, a big difference. Now, you don't have to have those crisscross antennas. I can work. I can work the satellites with my just standard Yaggies up, uh, up there. But uh, this, should, this should make the station uh, a whole lot better, you know. Uh, all right, so there we go. That's uh, that's kind of what we're doing with uh, with satellite right now. Uh, let me go back to let's get there. We go. We're back. All right, so hey guys, we've had a fun night tonight uh, so far. I, I, I think we've talked about some interesting things. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the uh, phone uh, the Zoom. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the uh, Zoom link on here. If anybody wants to join us. Uh, maybe they got questions or want to uh, want to uh, join us and talk about some particular subject. We won't open the phones, but we'll open the uh, we will open the uh, Zoom line if I can copy. Hmm. Here we go. Copy. And by the way, Tom, I uh, don't know if you heard during the one of the breaks. Uh, I'm actually using one of those $99 computers that you showed on oh, yeah. uh, on your show a few months ago for yeah. my Zoom contact tonight. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It's got you a built-in webcam. I got one of those, but, you know, I'm having a little trouble with the keyboard. It's it's smaller or something, and I don't like the, the built-in mouse click. It, you know? it takes getting used to. Yeah. Uh, they're little chiclets keys but uh yeah. i love the small size of it to carry carry around with you it's uh really yeah. neat a lot of people are using these for uh logging computers at, at field day and parks on the air and different contesting uh they're great for that so and I, don't, uh, I don't know what that pretty is capable little computer i don't know what it's selling for now but that was a windows 10 uh, uh laptop basically and uh, you know it seems like Eighty-nine dollars or something, if you catch it the right place. Yeah, it was about that. I bought yeah. it on Amazon before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the same model that you uh, talked about, Evolve Mark Three, I think it's called Evolve Three. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a, you know, it's a pretty decent little computer. Yeah. And it came with Windows. Oh yeah, yeah. And a solid state drive. That's pretty cool. All right, it's a very so, big one. All right. It's like 64 gig, but 
Yeah. Um, for a logging for, computer or something small, that's all you need. Yeah. It's, uh, I've been writing Python programs on it. Yeah. All right. So let's do this, guys. It's, uh, it's about 9 o'clock. Let's just say this. We, the show, basically, the Amateur Radio Roundtable is kind of over. And we're now going into the show. No, the after the show show. All right. We're going to get that right. After the show show. And uh, this is where we'll talk about ham radio stuff, whatever you want to talk about. And we've got one person already joined us, Bill up here, WZ1L joined us. Let's see if we've got anybody else who wants to join us. I, I posted the link uh, in the chat room. Just click on that link, and uh, yeah. you will be in there with us. Let's see if Love Bill's fixed you. his smoke detector yet. Yeah, let's see if it's still beeping here. So while we're at it and we're waiting on somebody, let me just make a just a comment here that uh, for those out there listening on WBCQ on 7490, uh, hey, we welcome you. Uh, you're listening to Amateur Radio Roundtable. It's a show about ham radio, shortwave listening. And we're glad to have you uh, tonight. Uh, send us an email to tom at, <coughs> tom at w5kub.com. <clears throat> About to lose my voice. <clears throat> yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, man. Okay, and hey, hey, if you just want to listen to the show, we're on nearly every podcast carrier out there. Um uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening in my voice here. Uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn, you may have to take over. You may have to. <laughs> well, I was going to give it to Bill. But, yeah, we can be heard on most of the podcast carriers. And, uh, of course, yeah. this show is recorded. And uh, uh, when is it going to be available? Uh, Thursday, Tom? Yes, yeah, Thursday. Well, on uh, on any podcast, it's just on demand. You can get it anytime you want to. Yeah, but I meant that, uh, the, the uh, replay yeah, on of Shore this. Wave, on Shoreway, we're on at uh, 5 p.m. There you go. Yeah, uh, I was thinking the short wave. Yeah, four ninety there. Hey, we've got uh, uh, Ray, Ray Army. Roy. I think joined us. Roy there. Army, our Army. I get that right. Yeah. Hey, hey, our yeah. Army. I want to hear talk to us. <clears throat> unmute yourself. Hang there on, you go. Muting. Let me unmute. All right. So well, now you're muted again. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There How are you guys go. doing tonight? All right, man. Now, I somehow I managed to finally get you on a schedule and I finally was able to catch you. So, there you go. You know, question wise, I got all kinds of questions. I, I was an ET back in the 70s, <clears throat> running around with a bunch of, uh, and I was stationed overseas, so I ran around with a whole bunch of hams that were also Mars operators. But back then, you needed code to get your license. Mm -hmm. and I still haven't been able to get cold. And back then, you know, and I didn't really pursue it that much because the Navy said I didn't need a damn license. I worked HF, VHF, UHF, SHF, mm -hmm. VLF. So, you know. But yeah. now I'm retired. Mm -hmm. I got out of the Navy in 90, got into networks. Now I'm pretty much retired sitting here. My wife still works. When she goes to work at night, I'm sitting here lonely. So it's kind of like I'm starting to get back into this shortwave listening, scanning. Working on my tech license, I, in fact, I thought I had to step up when I found my ARL and kind of handbook. But let me see. This gets see if you can look at the date, 1979. I was gonna say, yeah. hey, you're 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 fine. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, that stuff don't at, change. Kind of like, and then looking at these tests. And they're talking FT8 and all this other kind of like, where? Well, I don't see, damn it. No, you yeah. don't see no, FT8 no. in the 1979 book. Well, no, yeah. no. It, it, FT8 only read it, had, I think, in what, 2019, uh, 2020, no, somewhere around right no. uh, Yeah, probably more like 2016. Packet, I think Packet was just starting to come out and starting to get big. Yeah. Back yeah. At that time. Oh, the yeah, internet packet. killed that. <laughs> yeah, packet was more like 82, 80, 82, 84. Yeah, you know, I used to send, when, when my son was at college across 200 miles from me, I would send a packet message to him. It would take like seven or 10 days to get there, man. Yeah. It would oh, take yeah. a long time to get wow. there. Wow. Oh, yeah. Packet was cool. We oh, were right. actually the first well, ones uh, to put a digipeter right. up I on I understand the... that. You, you weren't a 
you weren't a bulletin board type individual that uh, could set up. Yeah, set I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a digital guy. <laughs> I don't get into that digital stuff. I, I tried a little FT8 out here last year just to say I, I did some, but uh, I don't do the digital we used stuff. To, we used to hop between digipeters, uh, link one to another to another, right. and we could get uh, from Ohio all the way to Iowa through 10 hops. It wasn't always reliable, but we could get a message through occasionally by doing that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard to do that nowadays, but uh, back in the early days of packet, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I remember we put a digipeter up on Mount Cheha in Anniston, Alabama, and that linked Birmingham and Atlanta with one hop. I, I, I did one on a balloon, and I had people working through it over 12 states. Wow. Hundreds of miles away. It was really cool. <clears throat> But that was uh, one of the very first digipeters actually I used. It was a little tiny module. I forget who made it, but uh, well, you had GOB uh, making was, the PK one, and uh, I that think was more it of a, well. That was a software-driven type see, board uh, more than anything else. And it then wasn't you had Antronics. You had the Pack uh, Rat. Was uh, it an MFJ? You had no. MFJ. You had uh, AEA. Yeah, AEA. You had time wave. I had an AEA PK two thirty two. I, I still have it. You had the huh? who was it? The Cantronics K A M or something like that. Right, I had a cam. But I think the GLB the, uh, was the most popular because it would run on a nine volt battery. And what was it? GLB. GLB Golf Lima Bravo. They used to make the old uh, frequency synthesizers for rigs way back then. I think that's. Where what I told you, I'll have to look at it, but yeah, it, it ran off of 9 volts. It was the PK-1, ran on 9 volts, looked, but the board think, was actually more software-driven than hardware. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. That's what we put up on Mount Cheha as well, yeah. That was 80, I think it was like 85, 86 we did that. Damn. Yeah. Uh, we did Mars in 1988. Yeah. Sorry, Roy, we just kind of jumped and walked all over you, didn't we? No, I, it's, it's fascinating. Like I said, I, it was all borderline. It just the technology has changed so much. You know, I oh, sat yeah. back and I subscribed to a whole bunch of <laughs> YouTube videos on ham radio and shortwave listening and stuff. And and then the prices, oh, my God. I had I bought an R1000, I think was when they damn near first came out in the late 70s. I was stationed up in northern Japan, and the hams there had a store in one of the local <coughs> towns that was the only store up there authorized to sell out-of-band equipment because all the hams, Mars operators, were going down there and picking up open area, you know, open transmitters and receivers for Mars op. So I grabbed an R1000, had that. In fact, it used that at work because I wanted, what the hell was it? I was at one place at, oh, no, wait, Omasawa. I used to handle, take care of Link 11. Now, if any of you, I know it's a Navy. I know the Navy used Link 11 a lot. And I was, it was an anti-submarine warfare operations center that I was the tech there at. And then later, uh, shipboard. But Link 11 is kind of like a network. And it ran to HF which is what probably got me, prompted me to get into digital when I got out of the Navy to get a master's degree in uh, and taught computer networking and stuff. It oh, was very a cool. progression from the old Link 11 days. But I used yeah. to put that R1000, and I, because I'm the one that set the equipment up, I knew what damn frequency it was on, so I'd dial that up and it set to turn it down a little bit because the minute it quit talking i'm expecting a phone call to head out to the transmitter facility and replace that thing it took uh it was an it, it took me and an, uh, an airdale <clears throat> he to figure out that after three days the uh, hf transmitters were dying because they had mechanical relays for the transmit and receive <laughs> and he finally I, I talked to him i met Ran into him in the mid-80s when I went back to Japan. 
And he said he finally convinced the Navy to put solid state relays in there. And that's what allowed it to handle that type of constant, you know, transmitting yeah. the, the duty cycle issues and stuff like that that I hear you guys talking about with like FD8 and stuff. It right. took a solid state relay to take that transmitter or that transceiver and pop it back and forth. Mm-hmm. Then, and then, hey, uh, it, it, hey, Glenn. Yeah. I believe my uh, balloon uh, digipeter was a uh, uh, a PACCOM. There you go. Yeah, okay, yep, yeah. there you go. PACCOM. A little two board set. Yep. Yeah. That stacked on each other. I had four of them. <laughs> well, I, well, I had, had I had that, what was it, a 1276, a 1278, and there was um, something there that I bought uh, just before I went south. Um, I, I mean, my, my, my packet station there could go anywhere and do anything because it was set up that way. <laughs> yeah. I well, mean, yeah, I was doing ahead. Amtor. I, I was doing Amtor. I, I was sending it out. Um, oh, that's not familiar. Well, you also yeah, well, had the uh, um, the tapper boards, uh, and as a matter of fact, Heathkit had one. I I put that together and had one of those. I still have one of the very first tapper boards that that kit uh, that they produced. I think yeah. it was called a TNC two, but uh, the yeah. tapper boards were really fun. Yeah, I mean, I was at the uh, very first, um, oh gosh, what did they call that? But it was a packet radio uh, convention over there in Atlanta at Georgia Tech. I was at the very first one of those back in like 85, 86. I used to attend some of the very first uh, Tapper meetings in Tucson. Yeah. When I lived in California at the time, I'd drive over to there and they they always had a good uh, good meeting. Yeah. And that was just when packet was starting to take off way, way, way back then. Yeah. So, hey, Ray, uh, I think you're new to our our show here. Uh, how do you find uh-huh. us? Are, are you new uh, to our show, Ray? Yeah, it's relatively new. Okay. I, I think I've caught a couple of them in the last okay. one or two in the last month, but they were mostly the replays. Yeah. Yeah. If you post afterwards. So hunting down the schedule, most of these damn, most of you guys don't put out a damn schedule. Oh, I no. Hey, hey our schedule. No, 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 no. Our schedule. PM Central. Our, hey, Ray. Our schedule is every Tuesday night of the year at 9 p.m. Eastern. Forever. Uh, and Forever. I'm in California. We, I'm in San Diego. So. Six. All right. That's 6, 6 p.m. 6 o'clock. Yeah. Which, you now, subtract I finally two found hours. That, yeah. Put that in my calendar. And if you look at my calendar, yeah. I have a special on Google. I made a special ham radio yeah. GMRS. I've got my GMRS license at least. And I started yeah. adding all the schedules for all these live shows and stuff. And I was finally in a position because I'm finally on day hours when I'm actually up at this time. I saw that your show was coming on, chased it down. Saw where the chat was over on the link on a website. Chased that damn thing down. Found yeah. eventually. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Eventually found the chat window for your show. Yeah, yeah. Sat back, typed a little bit in there. Well, we I, have been. Uh, the Zoom thing yeah. came out. And it looked like it was an open invitation. I jumped on. Yeah. Well, it's an open invitation. Whenever we you have, can, uh, sir. we have been well, on, I, we've been on now I, right at nine years. I think we've done pretty good. We maybe hadn't missed more than three shows a year for nine years. Uh, we did miss the last two weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, I was over uh, in Russellville, so Arkansas, two weeks ago. Other I was things. in Russellville Other and uh, did a presentation over there for the uh, amateur radio group over in Russellville, where where I went to college and. I got to go uh, visit my college and go in my dorm and look at the new dorm that I was in. That's 58 years old now. Oh man! Yeah. You know, and then uh, and then last week uh, we actually came home from the hospital last Tuesday, and I just didn't oh. feel like having a show Tuesday night. So we're back tonight, and uh, we hope oh. to be on air every Tuesday. Well, you're on my schedule now. All right, good. And I- 
to Zoom after chat because I I'm coming out of a deep depression. Back in around 2014, 2015, I withdrew from the world. And for somebody that ran seven damn domains, I had a and I was used to be a reenactor doing the cowboy shows and stuff in Tombstone. If you've ever made yeah. it down in that area and watched the cowboys shoot each other up. Yeah. That that was the hobby I was doing. That's what I did during the 2000s. That's what I was going to do when I retired. But medically, and I used to do the mountain man camps. Medically, I can't do that anymore. I had to quit my reenacting. Those damn well, guns got heavier yeah. in hell. My back was killing me. Arthritis in the hips and knees. Well, you know what? That happens. That happens to all of us as we get older, man. I tell you, just, just take care of there. Pretty take care and uh, just do the best you can. And the best thing for you is to tune in our show every Tuesday night, and we'll uh, we'll make you forget about all that stuff. I just take take, take take a look at take a look at Glenn here. Now, Glenn, here. Glenn, Glenn, how you? I can tell. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna shoot it over to Glenn there now. Glenn uh, Glenn is thinking about retirement, but he's thinking, well, I might not retire now. He's well. He's well, I, I have back a, and forth. I have a sixty-four thousand dollar question for Glenn. Did yeah. you ever un, uh, did you un, ever unpack that radio from the box that was sitting over there to your left? Oh, oh, you meant the big one here? Yeah, he, yeah. He did. Yeah, not only it. is it unpacked. It's all mounted and hooked up and stuff. Oh, look at you. Yeah, yeah, we are all set. And of course, it even came with the operator from the factory. <laughs> oh, there's Miss Rodan. <laughs> well, Glenn, we're gonna have to uh Glenn, we're gonna have to try yep. to make contact, man. It's kind of funny. She's just yeah. now starting to adapt to the time change. And so she's an hour late for the show tonight. Oh man. Yeah. Hey, let, me you, uh, let me give you. Let me give you guys. Uh, are operators that I've run guys... into on all the YouTube channels. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you've heard about all these rigs have this cat interface. Yeah. 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 They, they didn't the put interface. them there. They put them there for the cats. Giles has a cat. That's all I can figure. Fisher shortwave. Uh, official S S. Blah, blah, blah. Shortwave listening. S W L. S W L. Yeah. 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 You know he's got his cat. There's. I, I do. A, I, I like to watch a lot of uh, uh, temporary offline, and that group there—they've got cats running back and forth and doing operating and stuff like that. My cat, part of my problem too. My cat had died, so I'm uh, that's the reason I'm so damn lonely nowadays. All my pets died out. The wife still goes to work. In fact, that's my, that's my alarm that I I always walk her out when she leaves at seven thirty. Well, you need I'm get, the, I'll be for a little bit then. I need to get you another cat. Hey, let me just make yeah. a quick announcement. Let me make a quick announcement here, guys, to uh, everybody. Just give you an update on Katie. Uh, we, we hope Katie will be back with us soon. Uh, many people don't know it. Katie's had some fairly serious uh, health issues. In fact, uh, Katie went through some uh, some pretty tough surgery here about uh, a couple of weeks ago. She's doing a lot better now, and uh, hopefully uh, she'll be healing and 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 get that smile and back on and back on our show here so we're looking forward to having katie back on here soon but we're not gonna we're not gonna rush her there yeah hopefully uh, she'll be back in time for dayton i'd like to see her up at dayton this year yeah i doubt she'll be going to dayton there uh again hey if anybody out there is listening on uh, wbcq on shortwave 7490 we welcome you tonight this is this is the after the show show. Uh, earlier we had the ham radio show called Amateur Radio Roundtable, and we're glad you're with us listening on shortwave. And uh, if you're out there listening on shortwave, uh, shoot us an email and let us know where in the world you are and uh, how you're hearing the station. We're not a real powerful station, about 50,000 watts, but uh, it does get out. And, uh, and uh, you know, when propagation is good, it's heard in a lot of places. So. Uh, please, uh, please uh, uh, shoot us an email and also uh, join our Facebook group, W5KUB on Facebook. We've got about 13,000 hams in that uh, Facebook group now, and uh, it's a great place to talk about ham radio. We'd love to have you there, and of course, join us on Tuesday nights at W5KUB.com. So, I got the announcements back in again. Let's see what else is going on tonight. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. I've got another little piece of information. When we talked about day in the park, yeah, okay. Uh, I will also be doing an Arduino presentation there as well, and we probably will have some Arduino gifts to give away ah, as cool, part of cool. that. All right. Well, looking That's forward the October to that. We'll, hey, we'll be down here. We'll be hey, down uh, uh, Glenn, and uh, we were talking about cats and ham radio, and uh, there is uh, the remember the Ten Ten Club. Oh yes, I'm a member of and, it. And they have. Uh, I'm. I'm a long time member. I'm member number twenty two eighty. They have a hundred thousand. What is it? What is your number? Two three one zero three. Wow. Twenty three thousand. So yeah, I'm. I'm down there with you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was they, on ten have... meters back in seventy seven, seventy eight. Yeah, that's when I joined. Was uh, actually a little earlier than that, seventy five or so, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, but you have to work 10 people on 10 meters and then you can apply and get your own 10, 10 number. And they have all kinds of contests and awards that you can get uh, for working people on 10 meters. And uh, their logo has all kinds of cats on it. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really back in, what was it? 85. When I upgraded to general, I, I get my, 10, 10 number and I forget what the heck it is now. I'll have to go back and look at my logbook. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, back then 10 meters, you know, that was when 10 was open back oh, then. Yeah. And oh gosh, 10 was well, my favorite band. I remember it's listening. wide open now too. And uh the 10 yes, 10 uh, club members are usually at Dayton signing people up. So yes. uh, look for them at Dayton. Mm -hmm. And uh sometimes they come to Huntsville too. So yeah, they were at Huntsville this year as well. Yes, they were. Um, I remember right, how well, wide open you know, we mentioned was back in the late 70s. Yeah. Yes. But, but they can find your number, uh, Bill. Um, if you talk to the 1010, send them an email and they'll find your, your number. It's still in their database. And they have a nice newsletter they put out. Well, it's into my old, so, my old call, KA4 Whiskey Whiskey Golf, which has <laughs> been gone since 1989. <laughs> So let me. Uh, well, let me uh, probably uh, still have it, and yeah. they can uh, reassign the number to your current call. All right. Let me uh, let me make an announcement here. Uh, you guys were mentioning Glenn and and uh, Bill talking about uh, Dayton this year. I uh, just want everybody to know, so they won't be too disappointed. Uh, we are not going to Dayton this year uh, to webcast. We've been webcasting the Dayton Hamvention uh, for about 19 to 20 years. And uh, during that time, uh, Hambot, most uh, Hamventions, Hambot has given away upwards to $10,000 in prizes to our viewers. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of expense. It cost us thousands of dollars to do that. And, uh, of course, uh, we're getting older, and uh, it's a long ways up there. Uh, we've been 40 straight years to Dayton. And we've been webcasting at about 20. We're not going to do it this year. Uh, sorry, guys, for uh, if if you're disappointed there. But there are others. There are others that are coming along now. You know, uh, webcasters and and podcasters that will be uh, showing it. So uh, uh, we'll let them do it. Now we will be at the uh, Huntsville Ham Fest in August, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll always go to Huntsville Ham Fest, and we'll always webcast that. And uh, it's it's really a nice uh, ham fest to go to, and we got great facilities there. Uh, everything's just perfect, and we'll uh, we'll webcast that. We'll give away a lot of prizes during that. Hey, we're coming close to the uh, end of the show. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week, uh, hopefully. And uh, uh, maybe I'll have some news about my satellite antennas and uh, have something done for you. Uh, by by next week. So anyway, I'm going to say good night to everybody out there uh, that's uh, watching and listening, and we're going to go ahead and shut the show down, and uh, we'll see you next week. Anybody got any last comments? Anybody? Well, I just want to thank Roy for finding us and joining on in. Yeah, yeah. Glad to yeah, have you with great. us. I'd like to thank you guys for putting up with me. All right, man. You're welcome. Come back. I uh, will. All right. Uh, anything else? Yeah. No. Bill, give me that. Bill, give me that information on some uh, satellites. I need, I need all the specs, you know, uh, to put in the uh, put in the map program. If, if you heard me, Bill, I think Bill probably.
you're hurting. Yeah, he'll remember. Okay. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody in the uh, chat room. 73, we'll see you. Good night. All night. right, let's see. Hey.